Well, the time is upon us, and the Mage Seeker is only a day from release. Now, every video titled All You Need To Know should be based around one fact. Without this video, you would be lost. Which is why the first thing I need to tell you is, without this video, you're gonna be fine. Even though the lore of League's universe is absolutely massive, Riot Games always deliver their stories in a way where it doesn't really matter which story you consume first. You can get into the comics and have no idea what's happening, you can watch Arcane and also have no idea what's happening, you can play the game and never learn about any of the lore. And as far as we know, the Mage Seeker should follow the exact same rules. At the beginning of every League story you always learn the base info you need for the story. After that you are just taken on an adventure. However, that doesn't mean that having more context doesn't enhance the experience. So today we're gonna talk about all the stories that should enhance your experience with the Mage Seeker storyline. However, I have to point out that there will be absolutely no spoilers. Even though I had the opportunity, I purposefully told Riot I don't wanna play the game ahead of time. Because 1. I'm gonna be streaming it tomorrow. And first impressions are always fun content. But also, without playing the game, there is no way I can accidentally spoil anything. I truly have no idea where the story is going to take us. So overall, I'm going to summarize every story of every character that should appear in this game. But because, as I mentioned, the lore of League's universe is massive, I will leave out some unimportant details. But at the same time, I will mention other things which are likely to get referenced. Even if it is just a quick side character. Also, one more thing to mention, if you don't want me to explain everything and if you want to experience the story yourselves, there is a quick and easy way to do it. And no, I am not talking about watching my other videos. Honestly, all you need to do is to read the Lux comic and the Katarina comic. The Katarina comic was purposefully released as a prequel to the Mage Seeker game. But the Lux comic is a proper setup for Lux and Silas and Garen and anyone else who might appear here. So if you just want some quick lore, the comics are the easiest way. But now, with all of this said, let's have a look at all the stories you should know before playing the Mage Seeker. Even though the main character of this game is Silas, we should absolutely start by talking about Morgana, who is going to be a big part of this game. Which means, before we start explaining the lore of Demacia, we need to talk about Targon. Mount Targon is a giant mountain created by celestial gods that also serves as a link to the celestial realms. Now, once upon a time, for reasons that are still unknown to us, there were small runes that were scattered across Rune Terra. As it turns out, these were the world runes which held the power to create worlds. And apparently they were scattered across Rune Terra because of some celestial who just wanted to be mischievous. Anyway, the point is. After humans on Runeterra started discovering these world runes, they realized they hold incredible powers and they started using them as magical nukes. And because humans are humans and everyone wants to rule the world, everyone used the world runes to conquer the world. This started what is known as the Rune Wars, a massive war that absolutely devastated most of the world. Now, as the Rune Wars raged, there were two Targonians who ascended Mount Targon in an attempt to escape the wars. And as they finally reached the peak, Mira, who was expecting two children, was chosen to be the Aspect of Justice. And after that she gave birth to Kale and Morgana. Sounds fine, right? Well, fun fact. Well, after Mira became an Aspect, she was turned into this. Let that sink in for a moment. Now as Mira traveled around the world trying to fight all evil and maybe quell the rune wars a little bit, her husband realized maybe this is not the best way to raise two kids. It all seemed quite dangerous and so he had a great idea. During this entire apocalypse there was a place on Runeterra which became known as Demacia. It was a kingdom built inside the Petricite forests. Now Petricite is a special material that has the ability to absorb magic. Which means that if someone holding powerful magic gets near it, 
they won't be able to use their magic because it will be absorbed by the forest. So naturally, Demacia became an excellent place where people could hide from magic. And after they combined the wood with the lime, they created petricide stones and they used this to build the entire kingdom. So yes, the vast majority of all the pale buildings in Demacia have the ability to absorb magic. So on one faithful night, as Mira was attending her celestial duties, her husband took her two daughters and fled into the lands of Demacia. Where they quickly learned that as all the people fled here from the magic, they were all united with hatred towards crime and magic. And while Kale understood the importance of laws in this region, because all of them were trying to escape the war crimes, Morgana felt sympathetic towards all the mages who were cast out. And in the end, unfortunately for their father, who was trying to protect them from celestial powers, eventually their mother tracked them down and two celestial blades fell from the sky in front of them. This is how Kale and Morgana became the winged protectors two godly beings who essentially ruled the Masia. Even though they still had their own king and stuff, but that's not important right now. After this, Escale's ideology became more and more extreme, where everyone had to strictly obey the law. Morgana found herself pleading for the cases of those who wanted to atone for their sins. And one day, these two perspectives clashed. One of Kale's most renowned champions, called Ronas, came to arrest Morgana herself. Because apparently she was aiding the criminals. And to protect her followers, as a response, Kale killed him by shackling him in shadowy flames. Of course, Kale wasn't too happy about this, and in rage, they swore to bring Ronas' killer to justice. And so, Kale and Morgana fought in the skies. But as they fought, Kale rained down holy blades from the sky upon the city of Demacia, which aimed to smite down all the sinners. But this also included their father, whose sin was taking them away from their mother. After their father's death, Morgana threw her mother's blade at Kale, and she even tried to rip off her own wings because they reminded her of her pain. But no blade was sharp enough to cut them off. So instead, she bound her own wings in iron chains, resolving instead to walk the realms of mortals. In the end, Kale flew back into the celestial realms where she wanted to fully attend to her duties besides her mother, while Morgana stayed down on the surface of Runeterra, where over the centuries she became all but forgotten. And these days, the reason why Demacia has all those angelic statues all around is because they only remember the deeds of Kale, who became remembered as the Winged Protector, while Morgana's dark outbursts became the legends of the Veiled One. The story ends by mentioning that Morgana stayed in the shadows of the kingdom, waiting for the day Kale would come back to Runeterra. Because should that happen, she would come back to bring all the sinners to justice again and Morgana will be ready to stop her. Of course, by now you might have realized that the story of Kale and Morgana is a direct parallel to how Demacia is dealing with the mages. For the longest time, even without Kale and Morgana being in their kingdom, Demacians still followed what is referred to as the Laws of Stone, which essentially tell you, you can't use magic in Demacia. We remember what magic did during the Rune Wars, and to enforce these rules, Demacia founded the Order of the Mage Seekers, who hunt down anyone who is thought to be a mage. And after they capture them, they bring them into the prisons where they torture them as they try to cleanse their magic. Usually this means that they force them into drinking petricide, which is very painful. And this is where the story of Silas comes in. Silas was a kid from Dragborn who also just happened to be a mage. However, he had a very special ability. He could see magic. Eventually, when the mage seekers captured him and they brought him into the prisons, they found out that he had this ability. And they realized seeing mages could be very helpful with capturing mages. And that's how, fully aware of the irony, Silas became a mage seeker, where he was really just used as a tool. 
And even though at first sight this may seem very sketchy to you, don't worry, the mage seekers do it all the time. Yes, no magic is allowed in the Masia. But the mage seekers can use it because they are the good guys. Anyway, on one faithful mission, when Silas and his two patrons, who were really his prison guards, were looking for a mage, who turned out to be a little child. Silas found the kid in an old shed and in an attempt to help them, he tried to hide them, which means that he touched them and when he touched them, he realized he has a second ability. Silas can also use the magic of any mage he touches. So after he touched the kid, he exploded with magic and killed everyone. After that, he was taken into the prison and he was no longer used as a tool for the mage seekers. And he stayed in this prison for a very long time. Actually, he stayed there until he met Lux. So, let's talk about her. Lux is a crown guard, which means she comes from the royal family. And unfortunately, she also happens to be a mage. Of course, because she's from the royal family, everyone is trying to hide the fact that she's a mage. Her brother, Garen, knew his entire life, but he always looked away and he pretended he didn't know. But yes, they couldn't hide the fact that Lux was a mage. For many years, things were fine. Lux successfully hid her truth, she even joined the Illuminators, which were special people who liked to help people. They were like the Damasian charity. But eventually, as she was exploring the main castle, she stumbled upon the Mage Seeker library, where the Mage Seekers were hiding all the books about magic, which she was interested in because as she was growing up, she learned that she couldn't control her own magic. So she had to find a way how to learn to master it. And after that, she stumbled upon the Wardens down in the prisons, where Lux found all the mage prisoners. And one of them was Silas. When the two first met, Lux was afraid of him because, well, Silas was a criminal. But she then learned that not only did Silas know that she was a mage because he could see magic, which definitely freaked her out, but he also became someone who helped her control her own magic. And so, throughout the next weeks, Lux decided to visit Silas in the prisons every now and then. She brought him some of the books from the Mage Seeker library because Silas was a nice guy and he just wanted to read something. What she didn't realize is that she brought him very special documents, which made Silas realize that Petricide not only dampened magic, but it absorbed it. So anything that Petricide touches, if Silas touches it after that, Silas can use the magic, which made him realize his chains can now be his weapons. And this is pretty much where the main story of the Lux comic happens. After Garen and Tyena Crownguard, who is their aunt, learn that Lux is secretly meeting Silas in the prisons, they decide to get rid of the source of the corruption and um, execute Silas. Obviously Lux doesn't agree with that and, well, Silas ends up on the chopping block. In an attempt to stop her from doing something stupid, they lock Lux in a room and she uses her magic to break out, which makes everyone realize Lux is a mage. Next, after successfully getting to Silas, she hugs him. Which gave Silas the power to use her light. And so Silas broke free. And this is where the Mage Seeker game should start. After Silas breaks free, all the other mages who are also hiding in the Masia realize now is the time to fight back. And so the mage civil war begins in the Masia, as chaos erupts all around the city. Throughout all of this, Silas gets to fight Garen, he also gets to fight Jarvan. They also fight in the royal quarters where Silas just touches the ground and he taps into the power of Morgana. Because remember, Petricide can absorb magic and so Morgana's magic is still deep within the Masia. And after he beats pretty much everyone, he takes Jarvan, he takes him in as a prisoner, you know, a little bit of a revenge for Silas being prisoner for many years. And they walk to the chambers of his father, King Jarvan III. And they realize the king died. Now because all of this happened in all the chaos, everyone thinks that the king was killed by a mage. 
But from the recent Katarina comic we learned that was a lie. The king actually died by Noxian hands and all the rebelling mages had nothing to do with it. Which only sparked up more conflict and now everyone hates mages even more. Anyway, with the king dead and with the city being in chaos, Silas escapes and I'm pretty sure this is actually where the Mage Seeker game begins. It begins right after Silas breaks out of the chains. Lux also escapes the city because, well, now they know that she's a mage, so she just escaped through the sewers. Down in the sewers, she met Garen and Garen finally witnessed her use magic, so now he knows that she's a mage. But they are a family and he knows that she's good, so... He hugs her and they are all good. Which is where the story kinda cuts off and it is all a setup for the game. So Lux can't hide the truth anymore. Garen learned that his sister is a mage but he is still attending to his duties. So he still has to follow the laws of stone and he still has to fight mages. Even though he knows not all mages are that bad. In all the story, Katarina came in, killed the king and escaped Demacia, so I'm not sure if we'll actually see her in the game. Maybe we will see her just as she is escaping the city. And there is also Jarvan IV, the one who got beat by Silas and whose father was killed. Which means he's gonna be very, very furious. Also, ironically, Jarvan IV is in love with Shivana. At least it is heavily implied. And Shivana is half a magical being. So yes, all of the Masia is corrupted and everything is just one massive irony. But this is where we can mention some really cool other things that may get referenced in this game. First of all, you know what I mentioned that Tyena Crownguard is the aunt of Lux and Garen? Well, Tyena was also forced into marrying Lord Eldred, who is the leader of the Mage Seekers. We always suspected that the marriage between Eldred and Tyena was there just to protect the Crown Guard family. But yes, this kind of gives meaning to keep your enemies closer. Also, I really wouldn't be surprised if Lord Eldred appeared in this game. He is, after all, the main bad guy when it comes to the Mage Seekers. Also, there are some other big characters who may or may not appear in the game. Xin Zhao was the main royal guard of King Jarvan III. He was asked to deliver a message just as he was being assassinated, so he wasn't there. And in the past, he actually swore to kill himself should anything happen to the king. Well, this is awkward. So he could be referenced in the game, but we are not sure. There is also Fiora, a really strong swordsman who isn't really all about fighting mages, so I'm fine if she's left out. But there is also Sona. Sona is a mage who was adopted into Demacia from Ionia. Her story is amazing. The Bavel family, who are core part of Demacia, know about all the mages. They adopted a bunch of orphans from Ionia after that entire mess happened. And after they learned that some of them were mages, they were just happy that they could keep them safe. But yes, unfortunately, in the end, people found out that even Sona was a mage. And so Sona fled away. Which means, somewhere outside of the forests, we might see Sona as well. Of course, we know that Shivana will also be part of the game. Long story short, Shivana was born from a draconic egg after it absorbed human essence. It was kinda smuggled all around Runeterra until she hatched and then she started escaping her mother because the brood mother thought that she was an abomination. Eventually, her mother found her in the Masia where Jarvan helped her kill her mother. So if Yiva, the great dragon, gets mentioned, that was Shivana's mother. And lastly, it would be cool if we also got to see Galio. Galio is a massive patricide construct that was actually built to fight Noxians. The Masians would always just drag him into battles just to stand there and absorb magic. What they didn't know is that Galio was created by Durand, a really clever person who is dead now but who figured out a way to give Petricide Constructs a soul. So after they absorb magic, they come alive. So every time he appeared on the battlefields, Galio just came alive and killed everyone and then everyone mysteriously forgot. Because I guess Demacians were just happy they survived. Regardless, Galio now stands in the capital city of Demacia and every now and then he gets woken up by Lux. Because Lux's magic is so powerful, she can wake him up just by proximity. 
But unfortunately, I don't know if we'll see him in the game, because Galio's storyline doesn't really fit into this entire Mage Rebellion. Even though, with all the magic erupting all around Demacia, Galio should be absolutely awake all the time. But that's really all the Demacian lore you should know about before playing the Mage Seeker game. Honestly, this is definitely one of the coolest regions that Runeterra has. Even though, to be fair, every region has a really cool storyline. This one just happens to be including a lot of different champions and a lot of irony. But don't be fooled, there is way more in Demacia than just mages. In the forests, I hope we get to see some of the magical beasts. For example, we now learned that there is a giant slug. Demacia still has some dragons, so maybe we'll see those. But also, I kinda hope that we get to see some demons. Nocturne has haunted a piece of Demacia for quite some time. And also, we know that Fiddlesticks is around. That would be a really cool enemy, right? But I'm pretty sure the rating of the game would go up if they included him. 